All right, welcome everyone. So uh, this is Grandmaster Sam Shankland, and here I'd like to talk about a famous game that was played a long time ago, uh, a game with Bobby Fischer's that's very famous um, against Petrosian. And uh, I want to talk about it specifically while using the program Decode Chess to show uh, what I think Decode does really well and what uh, other machines or other engines don't do as well. Uh, so uh, Decode does a very good job of explaining the ideas and moves in terms that humans will understand. And I believe this is very helpful for like lower to intermediate level players. So for example here, if you were to just look at what the computer says and it just spits out that bishop c5 is the best move, it doesn't really help you that much. I mean, in this position you think, okay, I go bishop c5, sure, but why? What's, what's the reason that this is best? Now, if your best move is to just take a piece or something that's hanging and you didn't see that piece was hanging and then the computer says oh you should take that piece you don't really need it to say oh it's the best move because it takes the piece but when you get to something a little bit more subtle like this where it's not abundantly obvious why bishop c5 would be best this is where decode can be very helpful so what it points out here is what you can see is this black would very much like to play d4 which will stop white from playing bishop c5. So for example, if you see here, it says it shields c5 from white's bishop's attacks. If you were to expand upon that, you say black threatens to play d4, and then following something like knight c5, bishop takes c5. Because this pawn on d4 is now in the way, white will not be able to uh, take back on c5. So uh, you cannot, so that, that's the first thing. We're realizing that d4 is threatening. And uh, sacrifice is a pawn in order to decoy the, decoy the white bishop. So for example here, what we could see is that in the event of d4, bishop takes d4, the bishop has now been dragged onto the d file and following rook d8, uh, the skewer here will uh, cause white some problems. Now here white is not losing material directly because he can play uh, bishop to... Um, to take f6 or perhaps even bishop c5 but in both cases his position is deteriorating a lot and in the event of bishop takes f6 bishop takes f6 black should easily have enough counterplay to keep things under control thanks to his active bishop here so the first thing that we realize is that black would very much like to play d4 and all of this comes down to the pawn structure what we see here the reason white is better is twofold and it's all because of the pawn structure the first reason that this pawn structure is superior is that black has two isolated pawns here on d5, this is an isolated pawn, and a6 is also an isolated pawn. The second reason is that white has a queenside pawn majority on a2 and b2 against this pawn on a6, which is further away from along the board than black's 1 on 0 majority on d5, this past pawn. Uh, that means that the more pieces come off the board, uh, the more we're getting close to a king and pawn endgame, which white would be winning. If we were to take all the pieces off, white would win immediately in a king and pawn endgame, thanks to the outside pass pawn. So uh, here, bishop c5 is a very helpful move for a few reasons. Uh, the first thing is that it stops black's main idea of d4. And if you were playing black in this position, it were your move, the computer would be explaining you, play d4 to stop bishop c5. And that's what we see from decode here. Black threatens d4, this is what he wants to do. So when white plays bishop c5, if we could look at how the game proceeded with bishop c5, rook f e8, bishop e7, rook e7. Here, uh, white played another very strong move in b4. Now, if you were looking at this game for the first time, you might think, wait, this move b4, why is this so helpful? Like, you know, the engine exp tells you to play b4, okay, great, but why? How, I mean, I guess now I know in this specific position, b4 is the best move, but how can I learn something from that so that in a position that I will get later on, because I'm not going to get this exact position, that I will get, uh, get something out of it. And what we see is when we click on decode and it says enables b5, it says after b4, in the event of black playing a5, white can play b5. And so this is a very important theme to understand. Now, what decode doesn't mention here is why this is so important. Uh, I think that the big point is that this isolated pawn on a6 requires protection from a heavy piece from black. Since it's an isolated pawn, by definition, if it's under attack, a heavy piece needs to defend it. So here, if, white, if black were able to play a5, it would be able to place this pawn on a square where it no longer requires protection. So by playing b4, what white is doing is make sure that black cannot play a5. Uh, because if black were to play a5 here, as we can see, and when we're talking about b4, when we said um, 
in this moment here after rook takes e7, it enables b5. So in the event of b4, a5, white can play b5. And it says guards a5. So for example, uh, after b4, if black were to play rook b8 and then try for a5, as you can see, the computer is constantly trying for a5 and it's not working. So b4 is prophylaxis against a5, and that keeps the pawn fixed on the a6 square. Because the a6 square is in the same color as white's bishop, and white's bishop is conveniently harassing this pawn, and the knight can come to c5 next to up the pressure, that pawn is going to have to, is going to requ be required to be defended by black's pieces, which will render them passive. So, for example, here what we can see is this rook on a8 would love to leave. It would like to go somewhere more active and useful, but it can't because black would then lose his pawn on a6. So. Here, uh, the computer, I think, does quite a good job of explaining that b4 is an important move because it's enabling b5 and therefore stopping black from playing a5. Now, uh, a lot of people have asked me all throughout the time I've been tweeting about decode and working with them, uh, do you really think this is, like, super, super helpful or whatnot? And my honest answer is I think there's things about decode here that I believe I can explain this position better than decode can. I mean, I think I'm showing moves that decode doesn't get or doesn't explain properly or fully enough. But I think that while, you know, getting a strong grandmaster to explain to you something uh, will probably be the best. I think this is tremendously better, like being able to say B4, A5, white can play B5. That's tremendous, that's a huge step forward compared to just saying, oh, the best move is B4. So decode is definitely somewhere in between like what a strong human could explain to you and what just turning on a normal machine could. But that somewhere in between is a big, big improvement upon like any other software I've ever seen. So this B4 move here is very powerful because it fixes that pawn on A6 as a weakness. So moving forward, uh, there was a critical moment that came later on here. Uh, so after F3, what we can see is that following rook E A7, black's rooks have ended up on these very passive squares. I mean, they are both on an ugly square over-protecting the a6 pawn. And that's all because of white's b4 move that the computer sort of said, well, we're always ready to meet a5 with b5. Uh, but moving on to this position, uh, this position was a very famous one. And it's one where Fisher's choice was... Uh, was praised tremendously. At the time, people thought the transmission was wrong or something. I guess maybe not the, the transmission. They didn't have transmission in those days. But uh, people were shocked by Fisher's decision to play knight takes d7 check. In modern times, I think a player, would, this would not be a wildly difficult move to find. Uh, but people thought, wait a minute, this knight on c5 is such an amazing piece. Why does it go and take that bishop? And the reason is a fewfold. But the biggest one all comes down to the same thing. This pawn on a6 requires protection. What black really wants to do is make sure to get his bishop to b5 and um, and then is able to uh, to then kick the bishop on b on d3 out of the way. So for example, if white were to just proceed along with some move like rook c1 and black were to play bishop b5 here, all of a sudden all bets are off because now... Uh, if these bishops were to trade, then now these rooks are on a nice open file, lasering down on the a-pawn. They were passive a second ago, and now they're not. But if white moves the bishop away, then black will be able to play a5 without b5 coming. So returning to this moment where knight takes d7 was played, when we look at what, um, what decode is saying, there's a few very valuable things. So, for example, uh, it says allows playing rook takes c7 and then allows playing rook takes c8. So if we look at what these are saying is in the event of knight takes d7, rook d7, rook c1, which is how the game proceeded, that here black is unable to play rook c8 and fight for the open c file. And here white has full control over the open files. And that's what makes uh, perfect sense. So um, here there were a couple spots that I think could have been explained better. And the re one thing you can find uh, if something doesn't make sense. So, for example, here, a lot of the stuff Decode says is, I'm not quite sure, threatens to play rook takes d5 check. I guess it makes sense that in the event that black cannot take with the knight. You know, okay, but here, forks the knight and the king. I mean, or we're not really expecting black to not take the knight back. There are some things here that I don't think are wildly relevant. But when you start seeing those, it's often because the position is deep enough that it needs to work a little bit harder to understand. Most of the time, you won't see this. Whenever you see something in decode that looks like it feels like it's overly simplistic or not relevant, this is the perfect time to click this dig deeper button. Now, my, my face might be covering it in this video. But if you click on dig deeper, it will start to, uh, or I should say, I should click on dig deeper on the previous move here. Uh, if I should, um, if I click dig deeper here, uh, it says, 
it, then it starts to come up with things that make more sense. So what we see is white has a decisive advantage, 2.37, but should be aware of black playing bishop b5. This is explaining exactly what I just talked about. And so basically, whenever you see things where it doesn't make sense to you, just click dig deeper. And it takes a little time for it to do that. I mean, I preloaded the dig deeper for this video, but then it starts to make perfect sense. Additionally, it explains the best line of stockfish, which is a4. So funnily enough, knight takes d7 wasn't even the best move. I mean, Fisher still won the game without much trouble. But when we start realizing that black really wants to play this move and we want to prevent it, then the move knight takes d7 as Fisher played becomes much more sensible and natural to consider, as well as the move a4. And it says a4 is good because it guards b5, a4, and black cannot play bishop b5 because a takes b5 captures the bishop. And it says, but should be aware of black playing bishop b5. You can clearly see that this is a lot more useful than a computer just saying in this position, oh, a4 is the best move, and you figure out why. Uh, because it's not a direct tactical position. It's not something that you can just sort of take one look at, oh, the computer found a tactic, you know. If anything, like, really tactical in its nature, I don't really think decode is going to be that helpful compared to an average engine that would just tell you, oh, this is the best move because of boom, boom, and then you understand it. But when there's any subtlety involved, like, we need to stop Black from accomplishing this strategic goal of bishop b5 that might not be immediately obvious to someone who is maybe a little bit newer to chess, this is doing a fantastic job. So, uh, and that sort of explains how Fisher came to the decision to take on d7. Uh, in fact, it wasn't even the best move, but it certainly was good enough to win the game, and it really has been given a lot of double exclamation marks over the course of history, and it really demonstrated a fine understanding of Fisher. and I think Decode does a good job of explaining why it happens. And after rook c1, uh, we can see that, uh, you know, for example, it gets, when you get to a more a simpler position here where it's not as dynamic from what's going on, it says rook d6, it's the best move because it guards c6, fair enough. Like, we can see that if white would like to play rook c6 to go harass the a-pawn and force it to choose between getting captured or moving forward and allowing b5, again, thanks to that b4 move. So, yeah, th that'll do it for this video. I mean, Fisher went on to win pretty routinely from here, and there wasn't that much else of interest in the game, I thought. Uh, but I really was found it fascinating to go through this with Decode and realize that this machine really understood a, most of and was able to explain most of what I understood about this game from the time I'd studied it, you know, many years back, as it's one of the classics of chess history. In any case, thanks very much for watching. I'll probably do some more Decode Chess videos sometime, and I will see you then.